Father, and of his Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Seat of wisdom. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of his Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Father Peter. Good to be here with you again. And uh, we're going to be looking at chapter 3 in the basic course. But before we begin, we just wanted to go back and look at two questions, one from chapter 1 and one from chapter 2. Um, Father, if you could just um, explain for us the new dispensation. New dispensation. We need to understand what word Greek and Latin dispensation translates. Economy. That means how a household is organized, not merely in the material things, but in the cultural and the religious. Uh, religious. The household involved here is the household of God, which is based upon a covenant, just as any household is based upon a covenant. You don't have a household or family unless you have a marriage contract, which, uh, strictly speaking, should be called a covenant because God is also one of the partners. Number two, economy, translated as dispensation, refers to the overall, uh, overall uh, 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 organization, but also to that which is the central feature. Thus, as it were, the economy, the household of God, emits of degrees of organization because everything wasn't perfectly organized. It was begun. It was, uh, if the future was foreshadowed, but not perfectly realized even before the fall with the marriage con contract. We call this the order of nature, not because there's no grace, but because the emphasis is on something that is natural as the, as it were, anchor, the focal point uh, of why, on which everything else ha hangs. We advance one step closer with the Old Testament or the Old Dispensation, the Age of the Law, where the advance is in the detailed prescriptions which God gave through Moses to illustrate and to foreshadow more exactly uh, the full realization, the fullness of time called the age of the law, because not because there was no grace available, but because it was the observance of these, particularly the ritual, ritual part, that was the anchor for the administration organization. And the third, third is the age of grace, where grace itself, that unique gift of our, lo uh, our Lord, to be incorporated into him, be sharers in the life of the divine, uh, the divine trinity, is the immediate Focal, uh, a focal point. That's called the new dis and ultimate final, this fullness of time in Galatians 4. When in fullness of time God sent his only begotten son, the fullness of time, time is the time for the perfect dispensation of divine blessing, divine, uh, divine, divine blessing, because it's no longer through na the natural order, it's no longer through the law principally, but through Jesus himself. That's the unique way that's what St. Paul is saying. Not because he wants to say law is bad, but we shouldn't focus solely on nature or solely on law, but nature in relation to grace, law in relation to grace, and above all, grace itself, in that sense, is, 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 is Jesus. And with Jesus, the one who is full of grace, namely his immaculate, because you can't separate them. The other question, uh, question deals with, I think, original, original sin, sin and how it is trans, trans, transmitted. First point, that you must keep in mind always. Original sin is a true sin, but it's not personal. The problem today is that we think a sin is not a sin unless I personally commit it. How dare my parents commit a sin for me? But it isn't a personal sin in me. As Father Harden points out, it's merely the absence of grace. The absence of grace in all three dispensations means you're not innocent before God. God. This point. Second point. You're, you're not innocent. You're not God. innocent before God. It's not that you're wicked, you're diabolical, you're simply not innocent. You're not just. That's all. There's nobody's talking about condemning anyone to hell, hell for that, merely that you're not, ex you're not, have, don't have entry to heaven anymore. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, we would have been all conceived in the state of original justice, innocent. And therefore would have had given grace, grace, because that's the condition God laid down. 
And why did he lay it down? Because there's the most important point, point, point. It's easier to save us if, in fact, we are in sol solidarity with Adam and Eve and all the children of Ad Adam and Eve. We see that in our Lord. <laughs> we don't redeem ourselves. He redeems us. And then we, as it were, share it. But we have to be in some way in solidarity with it. That's provided for ba by baptism. Baptism. Here, as it were, we are in solidarity with Adam, but he's missing the one condition necessary for the bestowal of, 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 of grace. Now, what's the reason that grace is not bestowed? Simply because we're not in the state of original justice anymore. That's the reason. Uh, the re re reason. But it also, conversely, makes our redemption possible, a second chance. De facto, it's easy. God had it. It was a subenta. If we had been been tried as the angels, one by one, one chance only, you make it on the first exam or you flunked forever. This is what is meant by all his angels being cast out of uh, of, of heaven, heaven, heaven per, uh, permanently. So who is better off? Those who insist solely on sin as individual, that's true, the angels, do you want to be one of the devils? Go ahead. Or are we much luckier, better off, if you want to say, that by way of this solidarity in innocence or solidarity in, 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 in sin? Now, how is sin actually trans, uh, transmitted? Well, basically, you could say God doesn't give the, uh, give the grace. But original sin as a state absence of original, uh, original justice comes about simply because we're under the moral headship of Adam until we come under the moral headship of Jesus. Why don't you find it in Our Lady? Because she's always under the direct headship of Jesus. She's his mother. She isn't under the headship. She's under the biological headship, but not the moral headship. This is a great contribution of Blessed John Duns Scotus. Never, never for, uh, uh, forget that. To distinguish between the cause of the transmission of original sin or of its inheritance, that's the Greek way of talking about, the inherited sin, uh, 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 sin and the condition for its transmission. You have to be under the headship. Of, how do we come under the headship? Of, by being conceived. That's how. Do you, can you think of any way other be, of being human except by way of conception through your mother? This is the basis of maternal mediation. The most perfect mediator, naturally, is the woman, period. Not the, the, the politician, usually thought of as a male, the mediator of labor disputes, all sorts of other things. They're only mediators in a very secondary and imperfect way. It is the ma maternal mediation that is the perfect exemplar in the natural order of medi mediation between the father and the child. From Adam, we inherit our humanity, but through the, uh, through the mother, uh, uh, through, through mother. But the cause of original sin in us is not generation. It's not intercourse. It's not the mother. It's the headship of Adam. That's the source of grace in the, opposite, in the condition of fallen nature redeemed. What is the cause of grace in us? The moral headship of Christ. It's dynamic through the mother. You have, as it were, the whole of, of, of practical theology right there, right there. Why marry and devotion at all, all the way. So that's, I think, enough. Once we realize that sin is not merely personal, but also a, can involve a solidarity in sin, just as grace is not merely an individual gift, gift of Christ to me alone and no relationship to, uh, to you, there is a solidarity in, in grace. There is communion involved in being rede redeemed. Charity is not, as it were, a purely individual, I love God, that's it. <laughs> Whether I love you or not, uh, you'll be surprised how many people conceive of the entire moral order as a purely individualistic fear. And what do you get? Why, the social sphere is totally, totally divorced from religion. Religion is a purely private affair that's, I think, sufficient for now on that, on that point. Uh, yeah, you think about those distinctions and you'll see, as it were, that the wisdom of God in organizing the economy or dispensation initially, the age of nature in this fashion, in, in this fashion is absolutely stupendous. And he is not repressing us, he is not taking away, he is not uh, crushing us with impossible burdens. He provided right from the beginning, right, 
faith and hope in the promised Redeemer through his mother, the woman and her offspring. That's what Adam and Eve were at, and they did make that because Adam and Eve are saints. They're in heaven. Our church is dedicated to Saint Adam in various parts of the world. You may, you're not obliged to believe all that, but that's the tradition of the tradition of the church. That Adam was buried on Mount Calvary. That's where our Lord descended into uh, uh, to, to limbo, hell, uh, hell, and among the first released was Adam. Read all the old Christian literature. Some of it appears in Holy Week ceremonies, and you will understand uh, understand the six that uh, the ancient writers are talking and talking about. Our block is modern Western individualism versus modern Western social. Neither express the truth. They take one little point and exaggerate it all out of proportion because they isolate it from every other aspect of uh, human personal existence. Okay, okay, let us start with uh, okay. lesson three. Lesson three, and we're going to be looking at questions one, two, and three. So, I think in questions one, two, and three, the essential point here is what do we mean when we say he is the natural son of, of God? We mean that as man, he is also natural son of God. There's only one person. He is fully man. We see a little for a truly man. I'll anticipate another answer. What does truly as truly God? He is perfectly God. You can't have, as it were, various uh, represented. He is perfect because he is God. And when you say he is truly man, you say he is fully man. This is the point that we uh, that is not grasped today. When we think of Christ as man, we compare him to ourselves. So if he doesn't sin, he's not fully man. No, it should be the opposite way because I do sin and can sin, uh, uh, sin, I'm not fully human. I am human, but I am not mankind. I am not manhood. I am not human nature itself. This is what we mean. It is perfect, complete human nature. Uh, human nature. But in this case, we see the great mystery, because this man is divine. He is truly man, but this man is not a human, a, a, a human spirit. He is the natural son of God. We, too, are children of God. And we are truly children of God, uh, but we don't cease to be human persons. Now, that's another point that we have to, how are our human uh, pers uh, uh, per per person related to the divine person of Jesus in his human, uh, human, uh, human nature? That doesn't mean he doesn't have, he's a divine person because he has the divine nature. But this man, this human nature is assumed, is a true man, and it is divine, literally, natural, not adopted, not legally. Etc. And therefore, he remains a man for all eternity. Why? Because this person is eternal, eternal, eternal. That being the case, he worked miracles. The saints work miracles because Jesus gives them power to do that. They don't know how they're doing it. You ask Father, how did he bilocate? That's a proven fact. He did it not just once or twice. Or Mary of Agra. They know they worked a miracle. But Jesus knows perfectly well how he's, how he, how, how he's, how he's doing, doing it. He personally is, is, is doing it because he's a natural son of God. And therefore, in his humanity, he can do things thing that no other man by himself can do, no matter how perfect, no matter how technologically advanced, advanced he might, might, might be. All these people are left in the, in the dust. Our Lord, as the centurion realized, all you need to do is speak the word, and it will happen. And it, that leads to our third question. Christ worked miracles and proved historically. He did these things. People saw him. <laughs> Literally thousands, maybe millions. We don't know how many. We have no idea of how many wonders he, wonders he, 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 he worked. St. Peter has worked. Can I walk across the water? Sure, come on. He did all right as long as he believed. When he stopped believing, he started sinking. But our Lord picked him up and brought him into the boat. <laughs> all dry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem of uh, hanging out the clothes to uh, to get, uh, get away. As this is a, we 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 are astounded because we always think in terms of process, the succession. You've got to learn one thing, as I pointed out in the last uh, d d discussion. When we are talking about God, when we are talking about specifically a divine per, uh, per person, we've got to change the focus. We do not compare God to what He is incomparable. We have to continually adjust our understanding of every spiritual experience, thinking, willing, love, uh, uh, loving, acting, commanding, ex uh, ex executing, making allowance for the limits 
the finite char uh, character, and then make that on the basis of what has been revealed. In, for instance, in the case of uh, in the case of our Lord's reading hearts and all of these, uh, 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 but in a perfect condition, we could do m much more. Or as the old Latin phrase, prostato isto, never taken to the norm. That's the weakness of Aristotle. He took the way in which we ordinarily think after the fall, which is not the most perfect way, even for, for, for Adam, as being simply the normal, natural way. But it's not the norm. Jesus Christ in his manhood is the norm for every form. And uh, along with him, in a special way, because she is the mirror of justice, the mirror of perfection, Our Lady, Speculum Justitia, in the litany of, uh, of, 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 of Loretta. That's enough on one, two, and three. Okay, so... Four and five were focusing on Christ, um, could not sin. Christ could not sin. This is one that, again, for the same reasons that original sin is so difficult for moderns to comprehend, whereas the ancients, they began to think of, they were aware of a certain solidarity amongst, uh, amongst all. We aren't any longer. We're so used to Western individual, uh, individual. Christ could not sin, but he's not a man. He's not human. Uh, how can I relate to somebody who can't, uh, can't sin? That's precisely the point. Uh, point. We really don't relate to people who sin. We only relate to people who are good. And the better they are, and if they are perfectly good, precisely as, uh, as human, we relate to them most perfectly because we can trust them. You can't trust somebody who is radically unfaithful. That's the point. point that, uh, he could not sin. Now, we ask, in his, in his divinity, by nature he can't sin. God can't sin because he's perfectly free. If you are perfectly free, you can't sin. Sin is the, 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 what is called the quote-unquote ability to sin. is not an ability at all. It's a limitation on freedom. And the more you sin, the less you feel you are free, the less willing you are. The uh, final form of sin is, uh, what the saints point out, is what is called achidia, boredom. No get up and go. Absolutely dead spiritually. And any good psychologist will tell you the same thing. This is the one condition they can't do anything with. They can't get a start. You can't do anything. You can step on their toes. You can hit them on their back, and nothing happens. They might just as well be buried. It's a terrible, terrible con con condition. And it begins with disinterest in divine worldliness as though the only thing that's interesting are the same, but all these things wear out. And finally, when you've worn them all out, there's no reason to live anymore. Right. That's the condition of a devil. That's why I said the devils are, 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 are they could not sin. Not because of his human nature. His human nature is like ours. It's limited. Any creature is capable of imperfection. But this human nature, concretely, by grace, by the fullness of grace, postulated by the hypostatic union, the incarnation, the incarnation, he is so in his right. He is so directly in love with the Father, uh, with the Father in his humanity as well as his divi divinity, that he cannot sin. So we would be in heaven. We cannot sin. Saints in heaven cannot sin because they're so taken up with the love of God by grace. Therefore, not only did he not sin, not sin then, then he cannot sin. In his divinity by nature, in his humanity by grace, so also Our Lady. And so also ultimately every saint in, uh, saint in, uh, saint, uh, saint in heaven. But we have to disabuse ourselves of that false no notion that the power to sin, the power to spit at God, uh, uh, reject him, thumb his, uh, 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 thumb his uh, 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 no, no, nose, is a power. It appears to be, by analogy, it is not in fact. In fact, it's a merely a limit, limitation. The fact that I can make that contingent choice here and uh, now is, of course, an exercise of freedom. Uh, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't sin unless there were some element of good, good there. Unfortunately, I can sin, but I can't forgive myself. It's something always to remember. It's one thing to be able, quote unquote, to sin. It's quite another thing to remain free to make contingent so I can keep on drinking, uh, freely choosing to have one more, one more for the road. Uh, but I can't do anything about helping myself out of, the, uh, out of the mess I've gotten myself in, in, into. I think most people rec recognize if you ruin your health, you can't get it back. I remember an old, uh, an old lady uh, saying, "Off, off, off! Not to take care of yourself, you know, of your health, spiritual, and as well as uh, uh, if you lose your health, you can't get it back." And that's what it means. We can sin, but we can't forgive sin. 
only God can forgive our sin. Our sin. Christ had a human soul. The explanation I just gave is very clear. He had a human soul. He's a full humanity. There were heretics in the past, the Polonaris, who, to explain the incarnation, eliminated the soul from Jesus. The divine nature did his thinking and loving. No, he was truly man. True God and true man, as in the divine pra praises. Those praises, by the way, are so important. Not only do we intellectually assent to this, we praise God that it is so. It is so. You know, and remember that always we praise God that he couldn't sin in his humanity, precisely because only there do we have any valid basis for trust. Not the other way, uh, other way, uh, way around. And yet people today trust, above all, sinners worse than them. It almost as it were, where you get, the, you get the bosses you deserve. Uh, and in this case, God gives us the boss we really need and can, uh, and can, uh, and can love. Okay. Okay, um, let's have... move on to um, eight, nine, and 8, 9, 10, and 11 um, as a group really focusing on 8. Christ possessed the virtue of faith. He had two wills. Christ died because he wanted to redeem us from uh, sin. And Christ had unruly passions like us. They all revolved around questions touching the human human, human, uh, human will, 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 will of Christ. They possessed the virtual faith. Why do we need faith? Because we don't have a vision of God. We don't see him. But with faith, we are able to know him directly. How do we know him directly? Directly, fine. He became one of us. We can approach him, but we need faith in order to recognize that something more than the mere flesh or his, his soul, that he's talking, he's conversing, etc. Many people have met our Lord, but they didn't realize who he, who he was, or they made a mistake, egregious errors, even today. There are literally tens of millions who think Jesus was some kind of a revolutionary, that he ran a brothel, so he had a harem, and so on and so forth. This is sad, but it's unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. Now, they'll say, well, then, okay, then he had all the virtues. Yes, he had all the virtues in a perfect way, except faith and hope. Why? Because he, again, we have turned around. Now, he didn't have original sin. And why? Because he was always with his father. He didn't cease to be with his father. And he always saw his father. We don't, he tells us about it. We know by hearing. And we believe, and so we have access to the Father now. Later on, we shall also see. But he can tell us about him and make possible our faith because he sees God. And if you see God, you can't believe. You're either believing or you are seeing. And it's not true exactly that seeing is believing. <laughs> because you don't have any faith that you need to see before you believe. Uh, before you believe, if you see, see what's the point of uh, point of trust is another matter uh, matter. But faith as well and hope. Why he always possessed God. This man is divine. He's divine because he possesses the divine nature, and therefore, in a certain sense, he is always with his Father. He doesn't have to hope to be with him. He doesn't have to long to be with. Him. He is with him. You know. This is what leads, as it were, to the whole question. What did he mean? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's not talking about one of our experiences, et cetera, et cetera but rather he's talking about a unique experience. He does have experience. He does grow in wisdom and age and grace before men, but he doesn't grow in the same way we do. His growth is perfect. Ours is not to Even in religious matters, we can be extraordinarily proud and off, 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 off base. So he didn't possess the virtue of faith because he had the beatific vision on earth. But that, that we could perceive that directly without faith, that's another matter, except on one occasion. Do you remember which? Mount, uh, the mountain of transfiguration, either Mount Hermon or Mount, uh, Mount, Mount Tabor. We don't, we're not interested in the name of the mountain here. At that point, in his humanity, before his resurrection, his disciples beheld the glory, and they fell prostrate on the ground. A little hint of that was given. The angels saw it in the birth of Jesus. And to a certain extent, the shepherds, uh, shepherds did and gave praise to, uh, praise, to, praise to God. But his glory, he could have had it. His veiled for the sake of our, re uh, sake of our uh, redemption, uh, redemption. He has two wills, a human will and a divine will, because he has two natures. It's been a favorite tactic to deny the existence of a human will. Monoth monothelitism goes along with monothelitism. One nature. One person, one nature, one will. 
That solves all problems. That's why Jesus can't sin. No, it's not because he has only a divine will. He can't sin because his human will is perfectly innocent, perfectly just. Always he does what his father wants, does the will of the father. Above all, to die on the cross, he doesn't have to die. Uh, is, is, uh, he, uh, he has a right to be immortal, but he chose to die, St. Bonaventure, from charity, not to do damage control. Not out of, necess uh, out of necessity because of the corruptibility of the, the body, particularly in the state of si uh, sin. And that also extends to our lady, the Immaculate. She did die, but not because she had to die, but because like her son, she willingly chose, fiat me, be it done to me according, according, uh, according to uh, We must once again remember that with Jesus and Mary, we have to use the same, uh, same inversion process. Don't compare the experiences of Jesus and Mary to ours because ours are not adequate to tell you, give you a fine idea of what they went through. Whereas if you begin with them, ultimately you come to understand your own and to others whom you want to help much, much better. You are able to understand subtle but very real distinctions. I want to underscore the word subtle. People ridicule Blessed John, he's a subtle doctor. You cannot understand the spirit, the heart, the mind unless, as it were, you can perceive subtle distinctions that are not visible, but nonetheless more real than the visible real distinctions that we easily perceive between this table and this table here. That's a simple thing. That's no great, big, uh, big deal. But to be able to distinguish between different ideas, concepts, you know, con uh, uh, concepts is important. I once had a t professor of logic. He was a great man. He once told us, uh, uh, we were, Complaining about having to make all these distinctions, As you know they say they say they, they say an empty mind is the devil's workshop. Well, a confused mind, one that uh, is the devil's junk shop. Junk shop. Junk shop. <laughs> Which is perfectly true. If you can't make a subtle distinction, all mental distinctions are subtle. You're simply confused. You rattle on and make no sense at all. Never after a while, that's where people lock you up because you're nuts. Not as you start doing any, any harm. Christ died because I've explained that because he wanted because he wanted to, not my will but thine be done. And he wanted to do because he was always one. He has a will, human will that is different from the divine will of the Father. But his human will is in the order of execution one. That's what obedience means to unite my will, which remains my will, with someone else. Uh, uh, someone else's. And if that someone else is perfect, it's all good. I also become all good and all holy, and my actions have the same value, be, uh, uh, value, uh, uh, value before God as those of uh, uh, the, the, those of Christ. Christ. Christ today is true God, and uh, uh, or oh, had unruly passions like us. Once again, and he did not inherit original sin. Why? Because because he is not under the moral headship of Adam, is under his moral headship. That's why Adam ultimately, and through Adam, uh, Adam all of us, are redeemed, are, 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 are saved. Where do unruly passions uh, come from? Original sin, concupiscence. Uh, there is not, therefore, a natural, spontaneous uh, uh, submission of all these different uh, instincts, each one good in its, uh, itself. Anything wrong with uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying a glass of wine? Not a thing. But then you might want to only enjoy wine, or only, as it were, uh, go to the discotheque. Is that uh, 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 we get into some? Uh, 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 if, uh, if, uh, we can acquire a certain integrity, a certain love by discipline, and gradually we're not affected by it. But Christ, as it were, did not need to do that. As Adam before the fall did not need to do that. That was one of the preternatural gifts, integrity. Integrity has not a reference to the, to the incorruptibility of the body, that's called the head of immortality, but as it were, to the perfect integration of all the powers under the control of the will. There was no rebellion of the lower, uh, lower man against the, uh, against, against the higher. It was a gift of God that was lost. It can be gained. A bit of hard work, spiritually, uh, spiritually speaking. But Christ, says, well, there were, well, on the other hand, and he was given that uh, in order that he might be generous in offering his life. And every saint is expected to join in that generosity, that act. Be 
co-redeemers in Christ. Not merely love God, but as it were, do that. That's enough on those.